look at this. Um, what I have here is um, in my SQL Server Management Studio, I have a two node cluster, Lab 2022A and 2022B, right? Um, and if we look at that, um, in fact, let me go over to this, to the console itself. Um, right, so if I go to Failover Cluster Manager, and I pre-created this environment, the, the cluster and a couple of AGs, because it does take some time to create and, and sync AGs, even with small databases. So we're gonna kind of do the cooking show thing where we'll, we'll look at how you would do this and then here's what it looks like, right? So I have, I've got my cluster, it's in Azure, so I've got a cloud witness, cluster name, and it, I actually see two AGs on here right now and, and we're gonna talk about those. Um, um, I have a contained AG and a standard AG, right? So, but to start with, let's go back to Management Studio and let's just kind of go through how you would create a contained AG versus a standard AG, right? This is one of the areas that um, the tooling is a little bit behind. So I created my contained AG with code, with SQL scripts. Um, that's going to be the way you're going to want to do it because the wizard, um, there's some pieces missing. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on one of these nodes and I'm going to say I want to create a new availability group. And as I go through this, I give it a name, AG2, whatever. Um, it's on a failover cluster and I just click contained, right? Um, reuse system databases can be confusing. What this, the only reason this is here is if you had an AG already, a contained AG that had its system databases, and for some reason you removed that AG and wanted to put it back, you're just saying those system databases already exist. You don't need to create them so you wouldn't lose all your jobs and logins and things. So normally you're just going to say contained, and you know you're going to go through and you're going to you know choose the databases um, and so forth that you want to use, right? So let's say I wanted to put this database in it and it's pretty much the same as as, as normal um, in terms of, of this wizard or the process for creating an AG. I'm going to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to go through the wizard. I'm going to generate a script. Um, so we'll go ahead and say automatic synchronous on both replicas. I'm not going to worry about a listener right now. Um, automatic seeding. Um, I was not able to get to work with the contained AG, um, but that may have been a, a function of my environment. Um, and so I typically do manual seeding anyway, full database and log backup, give it a path, all of that. Um, this is all just the same way anytime you, you um, are creating an AG. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to click script and let's take a look at the script that it created because it did miss some things that are that are important. Um, this is a SQL command script, right? So that we can connect to the different nodes. So this is very similar to what you will see um, when you create any AG, right? Um, a couple things here. In the create availability group command, notice it has contained right so that's just a, a word that you add to the create ag command um, which tells you that it's going to be contained where your replicas are so forth okay now notice what it did is it did the typical backup of the database we're adding to the ag and restore backup and restore wait for the replica to start communicating and you're done okay this will fail if we run it. What they haven't added in the, the wizard is that you need to add those other databases um, that get created um, manually, right, to the AG. Um, and so when I did this the first time, not realizing that I went through all this and it still wasn't healthy, I literally just went to the contained AG, availability databases, and said add database, right? Um, I'm on the wrong node for that, but um, that's okay. 
but you can see the databases that get created, right? So up here, okay, so we, we did all that. We created our contained AG. Up here, I'm connected to the node. And actually, let's go over here. Our contained AG is actually primary right now on 2022B. So let's go to the instance connection. So we're connected directly to the node name um, and see what we see on this guy. We see the contained AG. We see these two master and msdb and notice the name of those databases is the name of the ag underscore master name of the ag underscore msdb you cannot control those that's how sql server knows what it's going to be and if you look in these databases if you look at system tables and things you'll see some of the same tables right you'll see sys jobs you'll see sys operators um, master is a little bit more interesting because sys server principles isn't a name um, and so that's kind of that's that's a little bit different but um, so I see and what we have we have two availability groups right we've got our contained availability group on a and b um, that has uh, those three databases as part of it the contained ag database and the two system databases we also have a standard ag that has just this um, normal AG database in it. But when I'm connected to the instance, I see all of those databases. Um, if I am connected to the listener for the standard AG, I see all of the databases, right? Which has always been a little bit weird for people, right? Because I'm connected to a listener and I see my normal AG, which is this, and it says it's synchronized. That's the AG that I'm in, but I also see these other three databases that are in a different AG, right? If I, in fact, let's fail this over um, to the, let's see, that's standard, yep. We're going to fail this over to node A as primary because that node actually has some databases on it that aren't in an AG at all. So the way to think of this is that when you connect to the listener for normal AG, it's really just another IP that will connect you to the primary and you're going to see all the same things on that connection that you would see if you were connected directly to the node. And that's that's how it should work, right? We connect to the listener, it always gets us to the primary. If the role changes, um, we're in good shape. All right, so we've moved this now to A. So if I refresh my databases, I've got a couple of databases here that do not say synchronized because they're just standalone databases that are not in an AG, right? Okay, compare that to my contained AG. If I go to the connect to a connection to the listener for the contained AG, my databases that I see, my system databases are master MSDB and tempdb. These are going to be these two databases, right? So if I'm connected to the instance, this AG name master is what I'm going to see here. Same thing with MSDB. I also only see the, the, the user database that's part of the AG, right? So let's see practically what that means, right? Everything is going to be context based in what you're connected to. So here I am on 2022B, which is the primary. this guy refresh that right so if I go in down here and I say okay here's my logins and if I go here and I see my logins one of the things you'll note is that most of the logins are the same 
When you create that AG, it's going to create it with a copy of the instance level master database on the instance that you created it on, the primary. But that's not going to stay in sync after that, right? So it basically took all the objects that were in my master database, created its own master. But notice there's another login here called test-contained that I see in logins when I'm connected to the listener. I do not see it when I'm connected to in any other way. OK, so if I create a login here. Connected to the AG listener. Call it test two. We'll give it a blank password because we actually don't care about this login. Don't do this at home. OK, so I now have this login. S2, and this is a login like any other login, right? So I can go in, in here, I can assign it server roles, I can map it to databases. Notice the only user databases they're going to show, the databases are going to show up are the ones in the contained AG. So I could say I want this to have a user there, it's going to create a user, that user is going to exist on the other copy of the database, of course. Um, but the difference is that that, that master database that it, this is all in, is part of the AG and is being synchronized to the secondaries. So I don't have to create this login in multiple places, right? But the, the trick here is going to be I have to remember to connect to the listener to create the login. If I go and I create the login up here. And we call this guy test three. That login exists on B. It is not going to exist on A. Because we would have to create it on both nodes in a regular AG. And it's not going to exist. That refresh was too high in the tree. It's not going to exist in the contained AG, right? So this is a really cool feature. I'm actually really excited about this because this is one of the biggest challenges a lot of our customers run into with availability groups, but it, you need to be very aware contextually of, of where you're doing things right in, in your databases. Um, MSDB works the exact same way, right? So if I go and I go to 2022B, the actual primary node, and I go to say SQL Server Agent, and I look at jobs, I've got all these jobs, right? Mostly maintenance jobs in this environment because it was created for this, right? If I go to my contained AG connection and I look at jobs, I don't see all those jobs that were created on each of the instances. I do see this job called test, right? So that's a job that I created from within the context of this connection. Right, um, which is actually kind of great because when you look at things like backup jobs, maintenance, things like that, there are jobs that you're always going to have that should run on every node that are unrelated to the availability group. But if you create your jobs that are dependent upon the availability group inside that AG specific MSDB database, now they're AG aware. They're they're going to run only on on the primary. So um, that's contained AGs. I think this is a really cool feature. Like I said, I think it has the potential to solve a lot of problems. I, I think a lot of people are going to implement it um, maybe without completely understanding some of these nuances and, and potentially get themselves into trouble. So um, that is that's contained AGs. Mm -hmm.